What's up, Ryan? Can you hear me and see me okay? Cool. I had a uh, mic hooked up, just making sure everything's working. Everybody can see me and hear me. What's up? Your leg, what's going on, bud? Mm, figure out where static's coming from. Hold on. Is that any better, Ryan? What's up, Samuel? Oh, the Taser Man's here, Mr. 570 Experience. And my wife, did you take out the trash? No, not yet. Uh, I got a pistol match on Saturday at South River. I will be listening to y'all shooting across the street all day long on Saturday. Man, it's so loud over here. I can just hear it like all day long. Just pow, 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 pow. Setting up on Saturday, shooting on Sunday. Okay. I'm sure somebody will be over there shooting on Saturday. All day. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to get this chat blown up so I can actually see it better. Childish Gambino from Bay Area, California. What's up? Give everybody just a few minutes to get on here and then we'll get started. Fire Ant, you done sanding that boat yet so we can get it painted? Mr. Big, what's going on? Loving the beard, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of just letting it grow. Glad you are enjoying that Glock. It sure did look good when I got it done. There's 17 people on so far. Yeah, y'all smash that like button. YouTube don't like me. I, uh, for those of y'all that don't know, because I do so much stuff with uh, Rudy Tooties and Pew Pews and stuff, YouTube has kind of put me on the, uh, the naughty list. So not only are they not paying me what I should be getting paid, like a lot of other creators are, um, my videos actually don't get shown to as many people as they should because I'm on the YouTube naughty list because I like the pew pews and that's what we do a lot on this channel. So it's one of those things just you got to bear with it, but the, the channel should have grown at, at twice the size that it did. And, and it is not going to, as long as I keep doing gun content, but I mean, that's, that's what my business is. That's what I like. I'm not going to stop doing it. Chico wise. What's up, bud? Yeah, this is this is actually my first time doing a live, Chico. Um, 
So usually you're up like really you're like just you should be just getting up now. You're usually up at like two, three in the morning doing reload and stuff, dude. Jessica, hey, how are you? Nathan, any recommendations for beginners? Uh <laughs> practice a lot. Uh can you be more specific. You have like a specific thing that you're, you know, that you're curious about or something that you, you want to know more about that I can help you with. Road one road running miles. What's up, bud? some of the pepper spray videos dude i got to tell you all right so if y'all have not seen the 570 experience you need to go at least if anything watch his taser video and the dog collar video the dog collar video was pretty funny so um he's actually one of our subscribers and he emailed me not too long ago about doing some stuff so i went to go check out his channel because i wasn't really familiar with him and i got on his youtube channel and first thing i see is him taking a taser like voluntarily so oh my god it was so funny he I, how long did you ride it for like 30 seconds a minute or something crazy like that so i already thought this guy was nuts and i get on there and i start watching some more of his videos and then he actually puts on his dog collar to test it out before he puts it on his dog <laughs> and he, he took it man i can't believe it but wow But definitely go check out his channel. He's got some hilarious stuff on there. Uh, let's see. Touch-up paint. Water-based acrylic. I normally use uh, the Createx brand. It's called Wicked Colors. Um, I like to airbrush touch-up. Uh, for those who don't know, I know I've shown it in a couple videos, but my, my preferred method is to do airbrush. And I've used a bunch of different airbrush paints. I know there's some that you can order online that are probably a lot better quality, but there's a Hobby Lobby like 20 minutes from me. And the, the one that I like to use is the Createx. Um, I believe it's called Wicked Colors is, is the kind that I like. And they're a, like a water-based, uh, you know, like an airbrush paint. I do use a thinner with it. They make a, so like when you're looking at the airbrush aisle at Hobby Lobby, they have the different colors and then they have a thinner that goes with each brand. They have a Createx thinner, and then they have a Wicked Color thinner. I like the Wicked Color thinner a little bit better. I use it with their paints, and uh, it seems to work really good. But the great thing about airbrush touch-up is, you know, since it's water-based, if you screw it up and you don't like it, just get you a wet rag and wipe it off and start over. Uh, but definitely not enamel. You do not want to use anything uh, enamel or urethane-based when you're doing touch-ups. Benton Hobson, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Chico, creativity sparks early in the hours. Yeah, yeah, it does. Nathan, starting fresh, ordering some smaller tanks this spring. Uh, where are you? Uh, where are you getting a tank from? You actually getting one made, Nathan, or are you going to try to get one built? Jessica asked, "How do you prep something that's been powder coated?" Uh, starting a full job on a Honda VTX and the breather is powder coated. It really depends on how much you trust the powder coating that's on there. If it's if it's been on there a while and it looks like it's in good shape, what I'll do is I'll take a red scotch Sprite pad. Well, first off, you need to clean it really good first. Uh, Degrease it with some kind of wax and grease remover. Uh, Prepsol is the one that most people use. You can get it at AutoZone. Uh, it's a little spray can. But after you degrease it and clean it really good, you just take a red scotch spray pad and scuff that powder coat up. Powder coat's nothing more than like paint that's already dry and it's electrostatically charged onto the part and then they bake it to get the paint to melt and go onto the part all over the place. It's a little bit more durable than regular paint, but it still has its limitations, but it holds you know, any of our hydrographics paints very, very well. So most of ours are urethane based. Um, I do use a couple of water based ones, but you can uh, just scuff it up really good and spray right to it. You don't have to put a primer on it. If you use a one-hit wonder like I do here, just you spray it out of a rattle can right onto the onto the powder coated parts. Um, if the powder coating, like I was saying before, that's if the powder coating is in good shape. If it's not in good shape or it's starting to flake or peel or it just doesn't look like it's in great shape, it looks like it's been you know road hard and put up wet a few times. 
I would definitely consider taking it and having it sandblasted and getting all that powder coating off and getting it back down to bare metal if you don't have a sandblaster yourself. If you got a sandblaster yourself, have fun. Sandblasting powder coat is, is not fun at all. Uh, yes, yes, he is my hero for taking that 30 second ride. Uh, <laughs> you're the only person I know of that has ever done that. That's pretty crazy. Andrew, let me know an average price for an AR-15 Cerakote. I'm building a rifle for my uncle and I'm trying to figure out pricing for everything. Uh, best thing I can get you to do is email me uh, and some pictures of what all you want and the colors and stuff. And then I can get back to you on a price for a custom project like that. Uh, my email address is in the description section of every single one of the videos. It's chris at atfhydrographics.com. And I will be checking those tonight after I get off of here. Yeah, Chico, definitely go go check him out. You'll uh, you'll enjoy that. It was he. I think he was like doing it in somebody's backyard. It was it was pretty awesome. Uh, Benton asks, your film supplier and how much does it cost? Also, have you mentioned any other videos staying with certain patterns? You just have to use a specific base color. Okay, so it really depends on what film you're looking for. The the different film manufacturers all have films that they all carry, and some that are exclusive to them, and some that they have licenses for. So, like, a lot of the really popular camo patterns like Multicam, Cryptek, Atax, you can only buy those from TWN. That's the only place that has a license for it. Now, there are some other ones that have lookalikes or knockoffs, uh, and you can get those from a lot of different places. Um, but, like, if, say you wanted Mossy Oak or you wanted some of the Big Brain exclusive films, you'd have to buy them straight from Big Brain. Uh, One Hit Wonder also sells film. You've got Liquid Concepts. Um, they sell film. I'm trying to think who else uh, dip pros dip demon dip ape uh they're all over in i think it's south carolina they sell films there's a bunch of different places and and i don't order from just one place it all depends on where the customer you know what kind of pattern they pick because you know some places i can only get certain things and and from certain companies so i order from all over the place Oh, uh, let's see here. We got a lot of questions coming in. Um, so certain patterns have to be used with a specific base color. That has to do with those licensed camo patterns. So like Cryptek, for instance, uh, Cryptek has a specific base coat color that they want you to use with their camo. Uh, you are not supposed to you know, deviate from that. Uh, Cryptek wants their camo to stay true, just like Mossy Oak does and Realtree and Atax, Multicam. They want you to keep you know, those, those colors that they recommend for it so they keep the originality of their camo patterns. The ones that are different are like, uh, a Cryptek sell, in particular sells a universal camo pattern. So it's just, it looks like Cryptek, but it's just all black and gray. But the background is clear, so you can put it over any base coat color you want. So you can do like a Cryptek over orange or yellow or bright red or whatever. Uh, Mossy Oak has the same thing. They have the country roots pattern, which you can put over any base coat color. Uh, but all the Mossy Oak films, because I, I do a lot of Mossy Oak, so like all the Mossy Oak films have a specific base coat color that goes with them. Uh, same thing with Multicam, uh, Atax, Veil Camo, uh, True Timber, there's there's a bunch of them. They all require a specific base coat. Uh, Muddy Girl, Muddy Girl's another one that has a, a specific base coat that goes with it. Uh, Road Runner Miles asked, on what materials does hydrographic tend to not work well? Rubber, silicone, uh, or anything kind of squishy like that. Um, since we do a lot of the PPUs, a lot of these like Hogue style grips and anything over molded. Um, and here's the weird part, like you can paint that stuff. You can sandblast it, get enough profile on it to where you can physically paint it and you can physically dip it. It just will not hold up very long. Um, it, I've even had, I think I did one about a year or two ago it was a, I'm trying to remember what it was called. It's like a, like a buffer, like a big car buffer. And there was some areas on it that had like a rubber over mold that would not come off. It was actually molded into the plastic. And I, since I couldn't get it off, I had no choice. I had to paint right over it because tape wouldn't stick to it. Uh, and I told the customer when I did it that I have no clue how long this stuff's going to hold up on those rubber parts. On the plastic parts, I know it'll, you know, it'll be fine. But the rest of it, 
you know, I don't know. So no silicone, no rubber, no uh, those kind of squishy over mold, silicone, anything like that. Those are uh, not good things to hydro dip. Off to the Z's, Mr. B. Have a good night. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it. Chico says powder coat comes off with brake cleaner. Uh, yeah, uh, so does paint. Paint comes off with brake cleaner as well. Uh, brake cleaner's got a lot of acetone in it, and acetone breaks down clear coats. So I'm assuming it would do the same thing with powder coat. Good tip. Thank you, Chico. This is why I needed you to come by tonight, dude. I'm so glad that you stopped by. I learned something. Uh, poly cattle style tanks. Uh, I would build a sprayers for the rents. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what that is back there. That's a that's a stock tank. I got I got that one. It's a rubber made from uh, Tractor Supply. That's where I bought that one. And uh, you can I've seen people turn them into dip tanks. Uh, we got a guy that's taking one of our training classes on Patreon right now. He just made one out of a out of a John boat. I mean, you can make a dip tank out of anything. Um, I'm probably gonna do a more in depth video about that one of these days about building your own tank. I I personally never had to do it. Um, I did the little tote before I got my big tank. Uh, but there's, it's, it's not, it's not crazy difficult to build a tank. People try to put a lot more effort into it and, and money into it than they really need to. So that might be a good idea for another, a future video. Uh, Jessica says, OHW is my paint of choice. Me too. I, I really like it. I mean, it, it's, uh, Josh said the same thing. Uh, one hit wonders worth the money. It's, uh, it, it's a time saver for me. Um, especially with as many guns as I do and the small parts, you know, sometimes I'll only get like just one little bitty piece of a stock and it's easy for me to just go grab a rattle can and uh, be done with it. I don't have to mix up primer, you know, and that stuff. And it, it sticks to everything. I've been using it on doing a lot of John boat paints recently. Um, I, we took my boat out a couple weeks ago and I think we were in about 20 mile an hour winds. And just holding up against the dock, I know we hit the side of the dock at least 15, 20 pounds. I mean, got a, not a single scratch on it. So I'm, I'm very impressed with One Hit Wonder Paint. I really like it. 15 seconds was my limit. You're a bigger man than me. 15 seconds is a long time. Uh, does hydro dipping work on wooden sticks? Yes, it does. Um, for those of y'all, I mean, if you've seen my videos before, you know that I use uh, little things to hold stuff when I'm dipping. What those are most of the time is uh, old paint stir sticks. Like I'll take, when I get done stirring up paint out of a big paint can, I'll take the stir stick and I'll wipe it off and I throw it in a pile and I use those to like tape to or hot glue stuff to. And uh, I've got paint stir sticks that are like covered in hydro dip and, and they stay there. Like you'll break the stick off before you try to you know, get that hydro dip to peel off. It actually works really, really good on wood. Um, the big thing with wood is you just have to be careful and make sure that you seal it really, really, really well if it's a soft wood. Um, and some of your more expensive and exotic woods, they get too much moisture in them. Uh, if they're not sealed well, they'll, they'll tend to pop and crack and twist. So before you go dipping somebody's Caesar Guarini, you need to make sure that you, <laughs> you spent a lot of time sealing that thing up. Uh, you can use epoxy uh, primer is usually what I use to seal them up with. A lot of people use um, uh, like spar urethane. There's a bunch of different things you can seal wood with. Don't use Thompson's water seal. That stuff's garbage. Uh, let's see. Hydro blasted or sand blasted. Would you better recommend to work as a base to start to work off a of powder coat this week? Uh, either one, if you can get it back down to bare metal and sandblast it with either aluminum oxide or uh, red garnet, one of the two, you have a much better chance of uh, the paint sticking to it no matter what you use versus just going to crappy powder coat. Wooden stocks, not sticks. Okay, yeah, wood stocks. That's what I was talking about. Uh, you can definitely dip to wood, just like I was saying a few minutes ago. Do a video showing us poorly done dipping job that you talked about, redoing it, but you didn't think you showed us how to take the old film off and doesn't need to be reprepped. Uh, yeah, I'm actually planning on doing a full video on this because I've been getting a, a ton of questions about it. Um, the easiest way to get a bad dip off is get denatured alcohol, put it on a rag, and you can wipe the dip right off. You don't have to get all of it off. Um, the only thing you need to do after you get done cleaning it is make sure it's dry 
Um, I usually degrease it one more time. I'm just, I'm a, I'm a clean freak when it comes to doing paint. So I degrease between literally every step until I dip. But just degrease it really well and then use that red scotch right pad, scuff it up real good, or you can use a gray scotch right pad if you want. And then you spray a couple more coats of base coat over the top of it and then redip it. Usually I don't like to paint more than twice without stripping it and starting over. So if you paint it initially and you screw up your dip, you wipe it off, spray another, you know, one or two coats of base coat over the top of it that would be my last attempt before i strip the uh whatever i'm dipping all the way back down to whatever it was whether it be plastic metal glass and starting all back over you don't want to build up a ton of layers of paint uh paint's actually stronger the thinner that it is the thicker that you build it up the more chance you have of it delaminating later on down the road over time so no i that's just my personal thing some people do more but me personally i don't ever do it more than twice without stripping it back down and starting over Uh, Robbie Watley, do you blast all guns your dip? Yes. Every, I can, <laughs> everything that comes into my shop gets sandblasted. Everything. I can't think of anything that I've done in probably a year or more that I didn't sandblast. Um, and, and, there, and there's a reason behind it uh, more than just saving me time. Uh, we had a lot of projects come in and when I get busy, I don't have time to sit and hand sand stuff. But hand sanding is and even with scotch spray pad there's a human error there and you leave that that window open for those one little area or that one little crack that you couldn't get to or that time you were trying to sand something down and you got a little lazy those are areas that will kill a paint job if you're not careful and i just don't take the risk it's easier for me just to throw everything in the sandblaster you can sandblast every inch of it with a whole lot more precision than you can with a scotch spray pad and the sandblaster leaves like the perfect surface for paint or primer or whatever you're going to put onto it to adhere to it. I have never, ever had an issue with paint delaminating from something that I sandblasted. Usually when I sandblast something and then I paint over the top of it, it's not coming off. When I, we did a, a big cup order a couple years ago and I had like five cups in a row that I screwed up the dipping on. And it was such a pain in the butt to try to sandblast them. I actually threw the cups in the trash and just went and bought new cups because I would have been there for days trying to sandblast that paint off. Sandblasting is, is very underappreciated. If you ever have the chance to get yourself a sandblaster, do it. It's worth every penny. Um, all right, where'd I leave off? Could I dip my wooden stock or do I need to get a synthetic one? Uh, Jackson, yes, you can dip a wooden stock. Uh, I tell people to just be careful with it and make sure that it doesn't have any big knots in it or really bad twist or grains that run really funky. Reason being is if for some reason you don't get that thing sealed all the way and you dip it and then put it in the rinse tank and it sits there for too long, it could absorb a little bit too much water and you won't know it right away because uh, they absorb water pretty well but it could be six months down the road. It could be a week down the road. At some point, that stock will twist or bend or crack or something if it has a defect in the stock. And there's really nothing you can do about that. Uh, with wood, and that's just what I tell people, if, it, if it's wood and it's not already sealed when it gets to me, can't guarantee that something's not going to happen to it later on down the road. Uh, but wood, I never had a, a big issue with wood. Just make sure you seal it really well. Uh, my preference is to use a 2K epoxy primer, usually two coats, and that's really, and that seals it up really, really well. Uh, but you got to make sure that you get all of it, like the front of it, the back, underneath, where the, uh, where the sling studs go in. If it's got a cheek rest on it, make sure it all down inside the holes where the cheek rest go. You want to get that thing really, really good and sealed. Chico asked, what is your most requested pattern? Most requested is carbon fiber. Uh, I don't do it most of the time because I'm not a carbon fiber fan. And carbon fiber is just one of those things. Like every dipper has that one pattern that drives them absolutely insane. And that, that's carbon fiber for me. Uh, but patterns that I actually do... Uh, would probably be Mossy Oak Bottomland. I do 
more mossy oak bottomland, the new bottomland, not the old one. Uh, I probably do more of the new bottomland than just about anything else. Zach Parrish asks, how do you get large jobs or jobs in general? Um, God, they, they come from all over. Uh, when I first started out, um, a lot of my work was local. Um, I wanted to kind of stay in the pew pew, rooty tooty, point and shooty business. So I got in with a lot of the local gun stores around me, told them what I was doing, handed out business cards. Uh, I did gun shows. Uh, I did a clay shoot one time where they did the sporting clays. Um, just, you know, kind of get out there and get your, get your name, get your name out there. Uh, if you're just starting out, you know, depending on which area you want to go into, uh, some people like cars or four wheelers or motorcycles or, you know, whatever you want to do, uh, try to focus on places that are near you that offer those kind of services, either like a four wheeler shop or a car shop, something like that. Uh, those are the people that'll get your name out there. Definitely need to do a video on building custom tanks. We can't all afford one like yours. I just paid mine off. Like, that thing was insanely expensive. I could have bought a couple of cars for what that thing cost. Uh, do companies make custom films? For example, if I have a custom-made pattern I've drawn. There is. Uh, the only one I know, or there's two I know of right now, uh, Liquid Concepts being one, and that would probably be the one that I would recommend. They just redid their film. They, they came out with like a newer version of custom film. I have not tried it yet. Um, I did actually talk to Liquid Concepts a couple weeks ago. I'm planning on getting some to try it out. Um, Big Brain doesn't print it anymore. Um, I don't know if that's a permanent thing or if they're just on pause for a while. Uh, the other company I know of is Fractal Camo. I have never personally used it, but from everything I have seen and read, I'm not going to waste my money trying it. Uh, I'm sure that they get a lot of bad reviews online from people that just don't know what they're doing and had a bad experience because they're inexperienced in dipping. Uh, but I haven't seen a whole lot of good reviews either, so something to be aware of. But definitely, if you want, if you have something that you've drawn uh, and it's able to be printed digitally, then I would definitely reach out to Liquid Concepts. Uh, Brian and his wife are very, very cool people. Uh, they do YouTube also. And I'm sure they'd be glad to make some custom film for you. Uh, sorry for spamming about the wooden stocks. Didn't realize the chat was delayed. Yeah, the chat's delayed just a little bit. Uh, I'm actually watching the chat on my computer screen, and it's it's about 15, 20 seconds off. Uh, I recommend going to a certification class for new companies. Yes and no. Um, and this is just my personal opinion. Uh, I've been to a couple different training classes. You get a lot of good quality training at training classes, but you're going to get more training in, uh, from your experience. I learned, you know, like when you go to a training class is what I tell people, and that's why we started doing this you know, online thing on Patreon, uh, so you can get little bits and pieces of information every couple of days instead of just getting slammed with everything all at once. So like I remember when I first went to training, when you walk in the door and you're seeing all the stuff for the first time and you're seeing a professional company do all the things that you wish you could do and that you've seen on YouTube and you know can be done, you get that uh, like kind of overwhelmed, excited feeling. And part of that excitement blocks out your learning. And you forget little things here and there that you're not going to remember later on when you get back home and you start practicing and you're going to be frustrated. You're going to get pissed off because stuff's not working. And had you been paying attention the whole time you were in class or in training, you wouldn't have those little issues. Um, you know, I, if you're already experienced in dipping, then it's not a bad idea to go to a training class and just get some pointers and stuff from other people. Um, but if you're more focused on the business aspect of it, our, uh, our Patreon uh, business and business elite classes is definitely something you should check out. And I'd specifically put it together the way that I did for a reason. Uh, you get, you know, I went to a three-day training class my first time, and by the time I got done, I had so much stuff in my head that I, I couldn't remember half of it. And I think I forgot more in three days than I learned over the next three years. You'll get a lot more <laughs> on-the-job training uh, as time goes on. Uh, a lot of learning, a lot of practicing. 
Uh, but in the, and I hate to keep plugging my Patreon, but I, I, I put it together to help people. That, that's why I did it. Um, the the Patreon, the, tra- the, the business and the business elite class, that's specifically what we talk about is business stuff. We don't focus as much on the hydro dipping aspect of it. We talk more about the business side of it. And once you nail down the hydro dipping part, the, the business part is, is the hardest part. The hydro dipping is easy. Dealing with customers and, and doing your own accounting and advertising and, you know, dealing with the, some of your customers are, are not so much fun to deal with. Um, and then dealing with growth and equipment and then stuff breaking down. I mean, God, I've had so much equipment go bad on me over time. Learning how to deal with all that kind of stuff is, uh, to me, as a business, is more important than knowing how to hydro dip. Because hydro dipping, you'll get it. it. It just takes time. Uh, Matt Mac at Shopspire sent me away. Okay, cool. Matt is the man. Robbie Wiley, where are you located? Uh, we're in Georgia. What do you use to typically take all or tape off scope lenses or the barrels from getting paint and dip on the inside? Uh, on the scope lenses, I use uh, frog tape or hot glue, one or the other. Uh, for barrels and, well, depends. So like, so like this piece of, you know, random metal that I just have laying around, if I was gonna take this off, uh, this is the part that actually goes into the other piece of metal that makes things go bang. I would just frog tape all this after you clean it, of course. And then on the inside here, uh, you can go to, I think they sell them at Lowe's. I know they sell them at Home Depot. Uh, Ace Hardware sells them too. They make corks that are the size of a 12 gauge and 20 gauge and 28. Just take a cork and stick it down in there before you tape everything up. That'll keep that area sealed off. On this end, you can do the same thing. Um, in the video description of every single one of my YouTube videos, I have a, uh, a link to the rubber stoppers. They're like high heat silicone stoppers. It's in literally every single video that I post. If you go down in the description section, you scroll down and it says products that we use. There's a link to it where you can purchase them on Amazon. Uh, I recommend that you buy a bunch of them. Um, like usually when I order them, I order two or three kits at a time. And like the kit is comes in a little plastic box and it'll have like 20 or 30 of, of each size. Order two or three of them because you're going to lose half of them. <laughs> it, it never fails. Like I'll put them in a gun and I'll go sandblast it and they may fall off when I get done sandblasting or it may fall off in the dip tank and I won't find it till, you know, like three or four days later. So I end up just throwing a lot of them away. Uh, good to go, keep up the good work. Get where I'm get soon. Cool, thanks 570, appreciate that. Uh, Chico, yeah, hit the like button. Appreciate it, Chico. Uh, could you do a video of how you do your touch-up? I have seen other videos where they talk about touching up, but never show the, the, the whole process. I just did one for everybody over on Patreon. It's uh, it's kind of long. Uh, it'll be going up this week, so if you want to jump on Patreon, you can, uh, you can definitely check that out. The touch-up is so... <laughs> I don't know how to say this. It's... Uh, it, it's really long and drawn out. It's, it's kind of boring. Uh, I don't know if I would do like a full blown YouTube video on it. I don't think there's enough interest in it. Um, but I definitely go check it out on Patreon though. There's uh, it, it, there's really nothing to it. I mean, just taking them touch up paint and touching up little areas that you screwed up. If uh, if you can't get it with airbrush or uh, excuse me, if you can't get it with airbrush or the uh, like little you know acrylic paints that you paint on with paintbrush, then you definitely need to think about re dipping. Job would be great if it wasn't for the customer. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I, I have to say that most of my customers are pretty cool. Uh, I do a lot of gun customers, so they all seem to be really, really nice. The ones that drive me nuts are the uh, the the carbon fiber car guys. They call and they want like their entire car dipped in carbon fiber, and I can't like I can't make people understand that cars are not made out of carbon fiber and that the carbon fiber that we had your dip does not look like real carbon fiber because they'll send me pictures of real carbon fiber and then I'll show them, you know, like a couple of speed shapes of what our carbon fiber looks like and they're like, no, that's not what I want. I'm like, I can't help you, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, 
uh, Josh so many pointers on our Patreon. It saved me a lot of time. Chris is a good resource for everyone. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. Josh is on uh, Patreon with us. He's uh, taking one of the courses right now, and uh, he gives me a lot of feedback. So that's what I really like about Patreon. It's like I, I get ideas for little things that, that, that I wish I would have known when I was first starting out, especially with the business stuff. Um, but, like, we just did one the other day on something simple like uh, cleaning out the tank. We wanted a really, really in-depth about how to filter the water and clean out the tank and stuff like that. And uh, we got a lot of good feedback from that. It's just little stuff that people don't really think of. So, and Patreon allows me to, to take more time to, to do stuff like that. So, having trouble with activating using a paint gun, have a little better luck with hot versus cold activators, or have a little have a little better luck with hot versus cold activators. Any tips? Uh, Jason Ford, what paint gun are you using and what activators are you using? I'll be able to help you out a little bit better if I know those things. Uh, Jackson says, do you have Realtree Edge? No, I do not. Um, I kind of swore off Realtree a while back. They, had, they used to have this thing where if you wanted to dip Realtree, you had to pay this really expensive licensing fee just to have the ability to dip it. And I, like, I already pay too much for the materials that we use in the first place. And I, I wasn't about to give Realtree, like, every dime I had at the time. So I told Realtree to basically go screw off. Um, I think they've changed that now. Uh, but I'm personally not a Realtree fan. That's why we haven't brought it in. And we get a lot more Mossy Oak requests than we do Realtree. So I, I keep Mossy Oak around. Uh, it's out there. There's people that do it. Um, I've just never messed with it. I haven't found anything yet that I didn't have a plug to fit, and they are high-temp silicone. Yep. Yep, they work good. Terry Lockwood, what's up, bud? Having a difficult time trying to find a good inline tape to use on rifle scopes and the power selector ring. Any recommendations? Um... I don't see it very often, but there is a 3M fine line tape that they make for doing pinstriping on like old hot rods and stuff. It's super, super flexible and stretchy. It kind of reminds me of a really, really thin electrical tape. Like it's not a real vinyl tape, but it's pretty darn close. They, I know they sell it at Summit. Um, you go under like, fine, if you look up fine line tape or uh, pinstriping tape, they have it on there. Uh, I've seen it at AutoZone once but I've never seen it in any of the other auto body places. It seems to work out real good because it's a little bit smaller than a quarter of an inch. I think they make it all the way down to like a 16th. They make it really, really thin for doing paint stripes or for uh, pin striping. That would be a good one to check out. If that doesn't work out, um, it, depending on how big the power ring is, you might be able to get away with electrical tape. I have used electrical tape before. Uh, the cool thing about electrical tape is once you get a piece on there, you just kind of hold it with your thumb and just pull it and stretch it as far as you can and then try to wrap it around the scope. The uh, The electrical tape has enough stretch to it that it'll allow it to get down in those little crevices and stuff. Uh, another thing you could do is the, uh, I, don't, I don't, Terry, I don't know if you do Cerakote. I know you do a lot of dipping. Um, but if you can get a hold of some Avery Denison uh, high heat vinyl, the ones that we use for Cerakote. Uh, if you could get somebody to with a vinyl cutter, like if you know somebody with a Cricut, um, I call them glitter moms because they always make glitter cups. Everybody that owns a Cricut makes glitter cups for some reason. But just get them to cut you out some really, really thin strips of, uh, of that Avery Denison vinyl. That stuff is really, really stretchy and you can use it just like electrical tape and you can have it custom made to whatever width you need and just, you know, put one section on that power ring and stretch it really, really tight and it'll, it'll conform to it. And that stuff uh, sticks really, really good. Uh, where do you buy your speed shapes? Uh, all over the place, Benton. I have bought them from Big Brain, One Hit Wonder, eBay. I think I bought some at Summit one time. Uh, I think the last round I bought, well, I got some under here. So these are these are the last ones that I bought. These are just the plain white ones. Um, or this is what I normally buy, it's the plain white ones. But the last batch I got from eBay was actually black, uh, which kind of sucks because there's not, like, you can dip straight to these for practice, but 
it's a lot easier to dip over white and be able to see what you're doing. There's, there's very few things that you hydro dip that have a black base coat, uh, carbon fiber and like a few of the silver patterns, but m almost nothing gets the black base coat. So these kind of suck because I got to paint them every time I need them. <laughs> Thank you, Don. I appreciate that. Don Smith. I uh, love the videos. Keep up the good work. Jason Ford bought a cheap Harbor Freight gun and using hot stuff activator uh, seemed to activate and try to ink drink and seems to always underactivate when applying a lot. Okay, so the trick with activator is the hotter the activator, the faster you're going to have to dip and the less activator you're going to need. The colder the activator, the more activator you're going to need and the slower you're going to have to dip. What I recommend is finding something in the middle. Ink Drink is a really good one. Uh, Super Brew is another good one. They're all kind of in that mid-range. They're not too hot, not too cold. Uh, but just pick one, and I tell the Patreon guys this all the time, pick one and stick with it and learn everything you can about that, that activator. And uh, until you get that particular activator figured out, don't move on to any others. But the way that you want to set your gun up, uh, if you haven't seen the video, I think Jason... <clears throat> excuse me, Jason from One Hit Wonder did a video on how to set up an activator gun. I know Jim from K2 Concepts has a really, really good video on how to set up an activator gun. Watch one of those two videos and set up the gun like they describe. The Harbor Freight gun's not the best gun in the whole world to spray activator with, but it will work. Uh, set your pressure to like 14, 14 and a half PSI, somewhere in that range. Set up the gun just like I show you in the videos. But like over here, like say this is your tank. You're looking at your tank. Get you a tape measure and run your tape measure from one end of the tank to the other. And then take a piece of tape and put a piece of tape every foot. So you have it one foot, two foot, three foot, and all the way down the side of your tank. When you go to put your film in the water, you want to move at one foot per second. So you'll hold it up. Uh, depending on what you're spraying, you know, your, your spray gun may require you to be up a little higher. Some of them will allow you to be a little bit lower. But you'll hold your spray gun up about... 16 to 18 inches above the water you'll start off of your part and you want to move one foot per second one foot per second is for me is usually about a 1001 count so i start at one side and i go 1001 and i've moved a foot over that one second your first try on a new film you want to start at one side and just do one pass if you dip it and it's under activated you know you're going to need a second pass Try it 1001 and then turn your gun 90 degrees to however you were and then spray it again. And you may have to do two, you know, two different passes to overlap and get full coverage. If it overactivates that time, then what you need to do is speed up your passes, but still do two. So instead of doing, you know, 1001, and I'm kind of exaggerating this to make it look slower than it actually is. So instead of doing 1001, you may need to go just like 1000, 1000, 1000. And try to speed up your your passes a little bit um unfortunately without me sitting here like literally holding your hand it's really hard to uh tell you how to spray activator uh but that's my basic from where i start from and uh it just takes a lot of practice uh, a lot of practice uh, the key is when you're you know you're screwing up your activator the next time you go to dip something only change one thing at a time so if you went one pass you need to use that exact same film again, that exact same activator at the same pressure at the same height, and you need to do that one pass again. And then the only thing you're gonna change is adding that second pass in. If you change more than one thing at a time, you, you'll never know what it was that fixed your issue once you finally figure it out. Um, let's see, where'd we go? Uh, Josh is absolutely right. The gun is likely the pro uh, problem in consistent spread. Yep. Now you can get a cheap gun to spray halfway decent, but you'll never get it to spray perfect every single time. If you want to make perfect activator every time, go buy the gun that K2 Concept sells, the GPI. It's expensive, but it's worth it. I know, I have one. <laughs> Very good advice, Josh. That's uh, I tell people all the time, you're only gonna get so far with a uh, cheap spray gun. Terry says, knows me, a lady who makes those glitter cups. And I'll try some of it. Yeah, I, 
I have a I have a really good friend here that does all my stencil work and stuff for me, and that that's the first thing you see when you go on our Facebook is is glitter cups. It, it's like it's like a a rite of passage for owning a cricket. You you have to make glitter cups if you own a cricket. That's why I haven't bought one. I don't do glitter cups. Yeah, try Summit. Uh, look on Summit's website if they don't have it. Try TP Tools. Uh, TP Tools Online may have it. Uh, is this the job that you plan on having, or did you just start as a hobby and grow from there? Uh, so I was at my previous job one night, and I saw Hydra Nipping for the first time on YouTube. And the first time I saw it, I was kind of like, I, like I didn't know what to think of it. I was just like, that's cool, but I don't know what in the world I just saw. So I started doing some research like I naturally do. I'm one of those piece, people when like I see something and I, I think I want it, I'm going to research it for about two months and read everything I can possibly read about it before I, I kind of dive into it. Well, after like two days of research and hydro dipping and watching more videos, I like instantly, I was like, this is what I want to do for a living. I'm going to make a ton of money and this is going to be great. I'm going to be the biggest hydro dipper on the planet. Uh, I haven't made a ton of money, but I, I've definitely grown a very big business. It, it, uh, it took off like I wasn't expecting. Um, but I, I started out with the intention of opening a business. And uh, I started with a little Rubbermaid tote. I bought a kit from One Hit Wonder, one of those little uh, do-it-yourself kits. And the first time I tried spraying anything, I realized that I sucked. And I just stopped right there. I was like, I'm not going to waste any more money and any more of my time. I'm going to pony up the cash and go get some training before I do anything else. And I did. And then thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in equipment later, <laughs> here we are. I see. Patrick says, why do you go into the film at an angle that you do? Does it matter? Yes, it does matter. Um, I'll give you a couple of things. All right, so flat objects like this over here. So this side's flat. If you go in straight down like this, what's going to happen is you're going to trap air at the very center of this when you go when it breaks the water. And it, two, one of two things are going to happen. Either you're going to have a bunch of little bitty dots that kind of blow up and you're not going to have any pattern there, or you're going to have a whole line right here where the pattern just kind of exploded. And what will happen is you'll have a dip on this side, you'll have a dip on this side, and you'll have nothing in the middle. That's from going in flat. Uh, for me, uh, I dip a lot of things that look like this and a lot of things that look like this. Well, one of the things about this industry is this stuff right here. I don't know if you can see that. That is stippling. It's, it's like the new cool thing in guns. Everybody wants uh, this checkering and stippling. Because of that, it makes my job very, very difficult because trying to get the pattern to go inside all of those little stipple areas is like trying to put a, uh, an angry cat into a toilet. It's, it's not fun. So what happens is each one of these little checkers and these stipples have a ridge up top. And usually what happens is the ridge wants to pierce the film and either spread it or cause an air bubble. Well, when it gets to the bottom of that ridge, and it's kind of hard to explain, but it looks like peaks and valleys. When it gets to the bottom, it traps air and then it blows the pattern out. The easiest way to get this, you know, stippling done without having a lot of touch-up work is to feed it in at a very steep angle. Uh, sometimes I even have to back feed. Now, what back feed is, is say this is the water level, and you would normally be dipping something at an angle like this. When I back feed, sometimes I'm almost completely vertical, and when I go into the water, I'm actually pushing this into the pattern like this instead of just taking it and going down. Um, that's just one of the things that I've had to learn being in this industry. If you do stuff that's not like this, then your regular angles, you know, like this, about like this, you know, stuff like that will work. You just never want to go in completely flat. Even with cups, you guys have seen me dip cups before. Uh, I don't know if I have one here, but I use this as an example. Well, here I got one here. So when you see me go into the water with a cup, I always go in at an angle like this. Once I get the cup about halfway in, I'll actually turn it on its side like this and then do the roll. But you never want to just like take a cup 
and stick it in just like this because you'll have an air bubble line all the way down. So always in at an angle. Once you get it about halfway in, then you can roll it down and then roll it over like that. Um, but yeah, most everything gets dipped at an angle. The, uh, the only exception to that is this. Can't say what this is on YouTube, but if you know what this is, when I did these, <laughs> and people do not believe me until they try it, and I didn't believe it the first time somebody told me about it. This is about the angle that they get dipped. And if you've watched my videos before and you've watched me dip stuff, you know that when I dip, I'm pretty deliberate about the direction that I dip in and my speed. This is literally how fast uh, uh, one of these barrels gets dipped, Boop, just like that. Don't know how it works, the science behind it. I just know that I've tried it enough and it works every time. So right here, whoop, as fast as you can get it in the water. All right, uh, Jackson says, do you hunt? And if you do, what do you hunt? I used to hunt. Uh, I would love to still hunt. But the problem is, is that I am in the uh, the pew pew business and the pew pew business, a lot of it revolves around hunting. And every time a hunting season comes around, my entire hunting season is spent catching up on all of the guns that should have been brought to me in the off season. So I do not get to hunt anymore. Uh, I spent all deer season uh, dipping deer rifles because everybody waited until the opening week of deer season to get their rifles dipped and we got busy. So I stayed. <laughs> I stayed busy all during deer season. Uh, turkey season is upon us. I've only had, like I have, people did better this year, but like last year, the, the opening weekend of turkey season, my phone exploded the whole entire weekend. This year, people have started a little bit early, so we've already, we've already pretty much booked with turkey guns. Um, but I stayed busy during turkey season. And then right after turkey season, people are starting to get ready for fishing. And then we get the fishing boats in and the rods and reels and bow fishing stuff. And then right after that, it's about time for bow season to start. Uh, at least here in Georgia, like our, our deer bow season starts in August. And uh, it's the same thing with the squirrel and rabbit and all that other stuff. It starts in August as well. So usually by the time fishing season is getting really good and geared up, it's time to get ready for bow season. And then I'm dipping bows. And then by the time bow season is over, it's muzzleloader season. And then muzzleloader season rose right into deer season. And I just don't get to hunt very much. Uh, when I did hunt, uh, back in the day, uh, I enjoyed deer hunting, uh, duck hunting. I love turkey hunting. I would love to have more time to turkey hunt. Uh, I really like squirrel. I really enjoy squirrel hunting. Uh, squirrel hunting is probably my favorite out of all of them because you didn't really got to worry about being quiet. And you're putting scent, you know, scent blocker on and washing your clothes. Just go out in the woods, walk around, have a good time. Uh, I, I really like the uh, squirrel hunting. Uh, but I love, I love, love, love kayak fishing. Kayak fishing is my jam. So I do a lot of kayak fishing. And it's so fun. I got a John Boat channel now, and I spend most of my time fishing in a kayak. Uh, but most of the rivers and, and stuff that we have here, you can't get to with a big John Boat. Chico says, are you looking forward to any new patterns coming out? And then, <laughs> like every time there's a new pattern, like everybody wants it. Um, I wish that Sitka would hurry up and release their their films because I know it's going to eventually happen. But like right now, everybody like Sitka is the new cool camo pattern that everybody wants. And I get calls all the time and emails almost like almost every day asking about Sitka camo. And, but we, we can't get it. They haven't released it yet. Uh, I know Cryptex got some new patterns out. They've got a new Obscura pattern. I did a, um, I did one a while back. It was a four. It was um, the, I think it's Obscura. It's the one that kind of looks like Highlander, like that kind of brown and tan kind of look, uh, like mountainy, like multicam kind of color. But they got a new one out now that's uh, more of like a dark gray and black and then they've got like an all black one that you can use as like a you know put it over any base coat color you want so i can't wait to try those out i really do like uh cryptic patterns like i have no need for it i just think they look cool so i, I like cryptic uh benton any materials you can't dip like stainless steel or chrome 
No, you can actually do it stainless and chrome. Uh, for chrome, uh, you have to have a sandblaster. Like, there's no getting around that. You cannot hand sand chrome enough to be able to, to get paint to stick to it. Uh, sandblaster is a necessity. So for chrome, you, you're pretty much taking a chrome plating off with a sandblaster. But you can dip to chrome. Uh, stainless is, is super easy. Clean it really good. Uh, scuff it. Some people use the Scotch Bright pads. I use the sandblaster. Uh, but everything else, like glass, bone, uh, I've seen, I don't personally do it, but I know a lot of people do the shoes and the hats and t-shirts and stuff. All that stuff can be dipped. Uh, I'm not an expert at the shoes and hats and stuff. I don't get a whole lot of it. I don't get requests for it very often, uh, but it can be done. I've seen it done. Uh, aside from that, when we talked about earlier, I think you came on a little bit later, but we talked early on in the, in the live stream about doing... Uh, silicones and rubbers and over molds and stuff like that those cannot be dipped uh, you can you'll get it to stick initially but eventually it will fail so stick with plastics metals aluminums all that kind of good stuff uh, Jessica said rifle barrel same as a shotgun depends on the rifle uh, most of the time yes if it's one that has so so this one's got the little rib up top if it's one that's got the big sights that are like iron sights, no, it won't work. What'll happen is when you get that in the water, it's going to want to stretch around that, and you kind of need a little bit of an angle to it to get it to continue flowing up. But for any barrel that's straight like this, it'll work. Uh, Jackson says, would love to be a taxidermist, but I'm not sure... I uh, would give up hunting. Yeah. I, I, it's funny. Taxidermists actually stay busier during the season right after deer and duck season. Um, during, like, actual deer season, the, the stuff they deal with most of is, is people trying to drop stuff off. Um, but they don't do as much work during actual deer season. Or at least the, the people that I know that, that do it kind of part-time. The, the people that do it full-time, they're, they're always doing something. Terry says, come to a train in our shop in deer season and hunt for three or four days. <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, Patrick, thank you. really help. Uh, keep getting bubbles. I've been watching your videos and trying to practice some more. Watch more and picking up. Just getting started. Um, if you're getting bubbles underneath the film before you dip, that's going to be a, uh, an issue with you actually getting the film on the water. Um, and that takes practice. Uh, we just did a video, I think it was last week, about putting film on the water. You just, you got to practice. It, it takes time. You're not going to pick it up overnight. I know that when y'all watch my YouTube videos, you're just like, oh my God, he makes it look so easy. And it's not that it's easy. It's just that I've done it so much and repetitively, like I literally do this every single day. Uh, it, it just kind of becomes second nature to me and I don't think about it. Uh, and, and you'll get there with it too. Just it takes a lot of film, a lot of film putting on the water. Um, if you like, if you watched that video we did last week where you see my little my PVC pipe that's over there, use the PVC pipe every chance you get to put film on the water. If you got a, a piece big enough that'll wrap around a piece of PVC pipe, use it. It it makes putting film on the water almost effortless. Uh, Patrick says, how do you get the pattern to match when you double dip a piece? I don't at all, actually. Uh, I got a couple that I double dipped this week. So here's one that I just did. This is a Mossy Oak uh, breakup. And I don't try to get the patterns to match at all. I actually let them overlap. I do what's, uh, what's called a ghost seam. I didn't come up with this method. Uh, actually, Anthony Stubbs from Mossy Oak taught me this very very good but basically all i do is i just kind of tape it off like this and let the patterns kind of overlap each other same thing on this side and uh, it works good for a lot of the camo patterns uh things like carbon fiber and stuff i would actually tape a line uh but you can see on this one same thing no tape line at all and it turns out looking really really good like that um if you do a tape line don't try to match it up you'll drive yourself crazy just do the best you can with it. And in all honesty, the, the only time that they're ever going to look 
at a, a, a tape line is is so rare most people don't even notice it the top one you know like on a stock like this you might see it every now and then but most of the time people don't even pay attention uh let's see explains my problem eventually gave up and just painted and cleared it uh yeah yeah try that out go back i have a couple of videos jessica from a couple of years ago uh, anytime that you see a video of a shotgun pop up and you see the barrel dip, go watch the video and you just fast forward to the part where you see me actually dipping the barrel. Um, I try to do it from a couple of different angles so you can see it. It looks like a lot more of an angle than it actually is. It's just a, it's a very, very slight angle. If you got it, if you're holding it like this and this is perfectly level, maybe just, eh, just, just a, just a tad. That's all you need. And then just bloop, straight down. You don't have to roll it. You don't have to, you know, try to feed it in or back feed it. Just do it a little bit of an angle and straight down. And you go back and watch some of my older uh, videos where I dip shotguns. You'll, you'll see how it goes. It's pretty easy. Uh, Tyler, is there any items that you try to steer away from dipping? Uh, awkward shape. Uh, won't make a good dip for any reason. Yes, I avoid car parts and carbon fiber like the plague. Um, <laughs> I get I get a lot of parts in, and people want carbon fiber. I like. I'm just I'm terrible with carbon fiber. It's, every time I try to do something with carbon fiber, I could dip a hundred stocks in a row. I don't care how funky they look. I could dip a hundred of them in a row in any pattern but carbon fiber, and it'll all turn out perfect. I don't have any issues. You could give me a cup like this and tell me to go dip it in carbon fiber, I'll screw it up 30 times. I don't know why. It's just, just how it is. But uh, carbon fiber, to me, is probably one of the most difficult patterns to learn and one I stay away from, especially on big car parts, because carbon fiber has like a 45-degree angle to the, the weave pattern. And because people are used to seeing that 45-degree perfect straight weave pattern, you can't control water, so if it flows, you know, it may kind of weave that pattern a little bit. And when people see that, they're like, oh, you screwed up my dip, or I don't like that. It doesn't look good. Well, you figure out how to make water stay completely still, and we'll, we'll talk. But I, I'm, not a, I'm not a big carbon fiber fan. That's why you don't see a whole lot of it on the channel. Uh, but for new people, that's always the first thing that everybody wants to get into when they start is carbon fiber. And I don't understand why. Like, everybody likes carbon fiber. There's, there's a thousand other patterns to choose from. Pick something else. But the, people want to get into carbon fiber when they first start out. I'm like, no, that needs to be the last thing you do. Carbon fiber is extremely difficult to learn. Uh, there's some that work better than others. Um, I like the rope carbon. I have better luck with it. Um, awkward shapes. Yes. Uh, anything that's, <laughs> that's perfectly round. Like I had a couple people ask me to dip bowling balls. You can do it. It's just, it's really, really difficult. Um, big bowls. I had, I actually got asked not too long ago to dip a bathtub, uh, which the outside would have been fine. The inside was going to be the problem. Trying to get water to flow backwards into a bathtub would have been pretty problematic. Uh, but anytime there's a big, huge void area like that, like a bowl, I try to stay away from stuff like that. Or I talk them into just painting it. No replacement for experience in a skill craft. Very true, very true. And, and being a reloader like I am, Chico, you, we both know that comes with uh, comes with time. Uh, JN says, is there any way to get one-off designs? Yes, the, we were just talking about that earlier. There are a couple of companies that make uh, custom patterns. Check out Liquid Concepts. I know that they have custom films that you can make. Uh, Fractal Camo is the other one. I can't guarantee that their quality is any good. Big Brain was doing it, uh, but they stopped. I don't know if it's permanent or if it's just temporary. But those are all the places that I know of. Anybody else got any questions? Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. I've been trying to keep up with chat as best I can. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, yes, custom films are a whole different ball game. They're uh, you, you dip them a little bit different. They they don't require as much activator. Uh, most people tend to overactivate them. Uh, in my experience, I haven't used the new liquid concept stuff. I plan to at some point. Uh, but in my experience, custom films don't roll very well. So like if you have a, a tumbler and you're trying to roll it, uh, you get about halfway and the ink doesn't want to hold together for some reason. It's just kind of one of those things about custom films. That's why I quit offering it. Uh, I had more problems with it than than I had successful dips. So it wasn't worth it. It was very expensive. Uh, I think custom film starts at like $35, $40 a meter and to quadruple the price of regular film. It wasn't worth the time and effort most of the time. Jackson, do you Cerakote? Yes, I do Cerakote. Actually, I think I Cerakote almost as much as I dip, if not more Cerakote some days now, nowadays. I'm going to wrap it up for this one. We will do this again. This has been fun. Uh, LeVon Powell says, is carbon fiber you use on guns the same pattern of carbon fiber you use on car parts? Yes. The rope carbon is one of the few that I will actually use on guns. Uh, I don't like to use it. It, it. it doesn't always turn out great, and I usually wind up having to redo it. Uh, I did one a while back. Actually, one of the guns is up there on the wall. If you want to go back and watch that video, uh, that is the, the pattern that I like to use on guns. So, but yeah, I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. I have got to go get caught up on YouTube comments and emails and get ready for tomorrow. I've got a bunch of stuff to do tomorrow. i got to finish up uh, Mag of the Month. Uh, since y'all guys are on live, I'll let you get a quick peek of it. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, I gotta get that video done. I've got Jumbo videos to do this week. We got a lot going on. Things are things are crazy. We got uh, Patreon going on. I definitely recommend you guys check out Patreon. You can learn a lot over there. I give away, well, not give away. I uh, <laughs> I uh, I share a lot more over there than I'm willing to out in public on YouTube. Uh, a lot of industry secrets, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So we we'll definitely talk about some good stuff over there. So think about it. Uh, if it's something you're interested in getting into, even if it's just for, you know, a couple months, just at least get on there, get you some good information. Uh, if you get into one of the, the higher tier business classes, you get direct access to me. So you can talk to me on the phone, live chat, email, Instagram, all that kind of good stuff. And I'll, I'll be more than willing to help you out. Um, but yeah, if I missed anything or you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment of this video and we're going to call it a night. We will do this again. I think everybody enjoyed it. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, uh, Jessica, and thank you, Chico. Thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. Terry, I saw you. Uh, Terry, I meant to tell you earlier when I saw your name pop up, Terry. I literally, every week when I post a new video, like, I have some really, really awesome fans that every week when I post a video, I know within the first, like, couple of hours I'm going to get a, a either a comment or a message from them. And Terry has been commenting on my videos since way back in the day. Really, really good subscriber. Always, always comment on my video. But... I saw this video on Facebook a while back of they were like trying to shoot fireworks and a guy's name was Terry and he was like in an electric wheelchair and they put the fireworks right next to him and the fireworks start going off and then the dude's like, put it in reverse, Terry, Terry. And then he just starts busting out laughing. If you haven't seen it, look it up on YouTube. It's absolutely hilarious. But every time that I see Terry Lockwood comment on a video, that is the first thing that pops into my mind is put it in reverse, Terry. <laughs> so uh thank you terry for being here appreciate it chico good to see you bud thanks for coming by <laughs> patrick thank you thanks robbie appreciate it, everybody we'll do this again uh definitely leave me some feedback in the comment section uh what you guys think about it and uh i think next time i do this since i was this is the first time we've ever done it, i think next time i'm actually gonna have some stuff prepped to dip and I'll set up the camera so that I can stand up and talk to you guys while I'm doing some dipping, too. Um, I kind of got backed up this week and <laughs> back it up, Terry. <laughs> I love that video. You can be having the worst day in the world and you just watch that video and it just instantly makes you start laughing. I love it. Um, 
<laughs> but I think, like I said, next time that we do this, I think we'll do it again, like maybe next month or something. I'll try to have some different things to dip uh, that I know I get questions a lot about. And I may even do some carbon fiber for you guys, even though I freaking hate carbon fiber. And uh, that way I can kind of do it live and you guys can see it a little bit more up close. Uh, I'll probably have to get uh, one of my buddies over here to help me out. Uh, probably Josh, my uh, my, my part-time camera guy. If y'all know, Josh is on YouTube now too. You've probably seen him on the channel before and I know he's on my Jumbo channel. But he's doing uh, woodworking. It's uh, His channel is called the uh, Patriot Shield Millworks. I got a link to it over on the Jumbo channel. I'll have to put a link to it on the, on the Hydrographics channel as well. But he'll probably come over and help me out one afternoon or one evening and we'll do a live stream to where y'all can actually see me dip some stuff and he can help me move the camera around and help out with comments and stuff. So... <laughs> All right, Isaac Ferry. Hey, I just, I, Miss Ferry, I just finished your gun last night. That thing looks sick. I cannot wait to finish the video on that one. Everybody's gonna love it, but that thing looks amazing. I can't wait to get it, get it back together. That thing's gonna be awesome. But yeah, Mag of the Month is coming this week. I've got them done, and uh, <laughs> I know everybody's wanting those. Just caught the last five minutes of this, but thanks for this and all your videos. Best seem to learn a lot from you. Uh, Levon, I'm going to have this up on YouTube uh, here in just a little bit. Probably take me a couple of hours to get everything, uh, like the title and everything done. But it'll be available on YouTube for you to come back and watch later on if you want to, you know, check it out later. So you can watch the whole thing from beginning to end. We had a lot of really, really good questions tonight. Uh... I see there here. What it looks like. There'll be a whole video on it this week. I got a a, a pew pew that matches it too, so it looks really really good. I'm gonna be shipping those out probably tomorrow for for the people that ordered them already, and then I've got some more of the the twisted tea i gotta make some more of those um i got so wrapped up this week i have not had a chance to make any more of those but i'm gonna make some more of those probably next week and put those up on the site so anyways thanks everyone for being here appreciate you guys being subscribers and checking out the live stream had a great time like i said leave me your feedback down in the comment section below definitely try to pimp this out a little bit more next time i actually do some do some dipping i think it'll be a lot of fun but you guys take care. Good night. See you guys next time.